All right, so today we're going to talk about uh, uniform circular motion. And basically, we're going to look at the motion of objects going in a circle. Really straightforward. Just from personal experience throughout this uh, conversation, you might consider thinking about amusement park rides. Um, either, you know, for folks who really love them, think about that feeling that those rides give you that, that you just love. And, you know, for people who hate them, just go with, here's why I really don't like these rides. So we're going to talk about the idea of moving in a circle. So imagine that you're on a ride that is going in a circle and you can go on a carousel and you just kind of feel like you're going around and around. But as that gets faster, if you kind of move on to one of the rides that's spinning really quickly, you feel that outward push. And some of them, the rides that even stick you to the wall and drop the floor and, and try to scare you. It's that feeling of being pushed out is what we think is going on. And I need you to kind of shift away from that because what's really happening is there's not really a force squashing you outward. It's just the back to one of Newton's laws that says, you know, the object stays in motion unless a force acts on it. You really just want to fly off. I mean, that's, that's really it because of inertia. You want to keep moving in a straight line and not go in that circle. And so what's happening is the force of that outer wall is pushing you into the circle. Might be a little bit backwards from what you really think is going on, but think about being pushed or pulled into a circle. So think about the carousel, the nice peaceful moving, and we're going to look straight down on the carousel and talk about what it looks like as it goes in the circle. And we're going to go clockwise around in a constant speed. And what's really happening is the force and acceleration are pushing you in. You do feel like you're moving out, but you're actually being pushed inward. And on, on the carousel, it's the fact that the horses are fixed. That's holding you in place, keeping you from going off the circle. In one of the, the walls, it's uh, walled rides. It's the wall holding you in. And if you think of something just as simple as spinning a ball on the end of a string, it's the string pulling the ball in, always inward. Some of the vocabulary for this, the pronunciation is a little bit important. So read carefully for the words and, you know, say them right. Uh, centripetal acceleration is acceleration towards the center of the circular path. So that, that is the acceleration of the inward motion. And then the force creating that acceleration is centripetal force. And that's the force that's acting on the object to go in a circular path. And it's always directed towards the center. Remember, there's a P in there, just remember that. Um, that could be the tension of a string holding a ball on a string. It could be gravity holding satellites in place. It, it could be the wall of that ride we've been talking about. Um, on the swing rides that go around and around, it's the chain of the swing keeping you from, from flying off. And then changing just a couple letters in here, we have centrifugal force, centrifugal force. And it is the fictitious force that gives you that outward feeling. So it's that feeling that I'm being squashed outward or thrown off. And it's all really about your frame of reference. Are you on the ride that's moving? Or are you not on the ride that's moving? So focusing on centripetal acceleration, that inward pull, um, it is got a, a symbol of A with a little subscript C, and it's the acceleration towards the center of the path. And remember, we can go, be, we can be going around the circle in a constant speed, but we're constantly changing direction to go in a circle. That direction is always, always changing, pointing inward, being pulled inward by that centripetal force. So you're accelerating. And that is that is what it is, a centripetal acceleration. Um, it is measured in meters per second squared. And we have an equation for it. There's two different ways to work it. So you want to look at what information you have given to you in the problem. Centripetal acceleration is either the square of the speed divided by radius, or if you have... Uh, things given to you with circular motion, you have angular speed squared times the radius. 
and the the symbols are shown right below. And just so you know that the closer you are to the center of the, the circle, the greater the angular acceleration is. And you can kind of think of it like um, you're making a tighter circle. So you're going to be bending the motion in more often. Along with all this, we've been talking about that feeling of being thrown out or that, that squashed feeling. And a lot, a lot of what people love in an amusement park ride is that, that feeling that's different. I'm being, I feel lighter, I feel heavier, I feel squashed in this direction. I, you know, that people love that because it's really, really different. Some people really hate it because it's really, really different. So just kind of think about what style of person you are. What's happening is, is you are in an accelerated, what they call frame of reference. So you're the thing being accelerated, but you really don't know it. So you, you can't observe what's really happening. You're going by feeling. So if you imagine yourself in a car, you're accelerating forward. So you put your foot on the gas, you are speeding up going forward, and you kind of feel like you're being pushed towards the back of the seat, down and back. Your weight is still st going straight into the ground, but that feeling of acceleration is backward. Now, if you really punch that accelerator, you get thrown back even more. And, and so that is your apparent weight. And it's kind of a, a combination of the effects of the feeling of acceleration and your actual weight. So that's what you feel like. There's there's inertia in there, the idea that your your mass doesn't want to change direction. So there's that piece in there also. Go back to the amusement park idea and, and talk about one of the loop rides with the loop roller coaster or, or any of those things. And you're, so we're going to go into this loop. We're going to go around in a counterclockwise fashion and come back out of the loop. And we'll talk a little bit about how it's going to feel as you go around the loop. And if you've been on one of these, hopefully this feels familiar. And if you haven't, Perhaps you'll have that opportunity, and I will have ruined amusement park rides for you. So you, you start the loop, and you've got an upward acceleration, and it feels like you're getting squashed down into the seat. So the, the, more, the more acceleration you have going up that loop, the more that squashed feeling feels. And as you get part of the way up the loop, now your weight is still pulling you downward, but now you have the track pushing you in. So that's what's giving you the centripetal force. The track's keeping you from flying off. And you've got that feeling of acceleration kind of throwing you a little bit upward. So you're starting to feel a little lighter. And then as you head up around the top, that feeling of acceleration is is huge. Even your weight's still pulling down. So you really almost feel weightless. That's when you come up out of your seat a little bit. And it's not like you're falling. It's just like you're not connected to anything. And, and so people really like that piece. And then as you come back around, um, you're going to experience something similar on the way down, only a little backwards from the way up. And then when you get back down to the bottom, once again, you're squashed down into the seat and then you head off to the next part of the ride. So the mathematical example for this is just, I, I picked a ball on a string. We have a ball with a five kilogram mass tied to a rope being swung around in the air. The speed is 15 meters per second. And the, the string is 1.2 meters long. So we, we have lots of information in here. We have mass of five kilograms. Well, mass isn't in our equation anywhere. So we don't need to worry about that. But we might want that speed of 15 meters per second, and we might want that radius. So let's write those down. And the, there were two choices for equations. One of them had the, the linear speed, and the other one had angular speed. Well, this is there's no radians anywhere, so we're going to use the linear speed, which is the regular one. And it's uh, speed squared divided by radius, so it's 15 meters per second squared. Be careful and only square that. Watch your order of operations if you're using a calculator. And then we divide that by the radius. And when you work the math out, you end up with 187.5 meters per second squared. So I hope this kind of gives you some interesting thoughts on, on how amusement park rides work and how things go in circles. It is a little bit counterintuitive because that. You don't always think of that inward force being the actual force. And that feeling of being pushed outward is the fictitious force. And it's not real. 
it's not a force. Yes, you're feeling it. No, it's not a force. Alrighty. Bye-bye. <laughs>